welcome. This video is totally different from any other kind of video I've ever done because yeah, we're just gonna be doing q and A. I'm just gonna go through a bunch of your questions. I'm gonna answer them. Yeah, let's see what I can do. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, some people just, you know, you got some interesting questions about me, who I am, and about um, divination and tarot, things of that nature. And so, yeah, I don't mind. I want to go on in and just do this quick little video for y'all. So this is for you if you want to just, you know, how I learned uh, tarot, <laughs> like. I was very interested in tarot in my youth and I would get books from the library to read it. I couldn't let my parents know. Yeah, that was, <laughs> but I was always fascinated that with the ast astrology. Yeah. My parents did once find a bunch of my astrology books. I was like, hi, <laughs> they didn't get mad or anything. They were like, and I was, I was expecting, you know, the, the wrath to come down upon me because my parents, you know, <laughs> were in the ministry too. But yeah, so if you do know, I did grow up in the church. I, my parents were pastors. Uh, they also worked at a very large, large, you know, we call them mega churches in uh, Southern California. I also <laughs> worked there too in the radio and TV ministry. It was, you know what, I am glad I did. I learned a lot about myself and I came out of it very really strongly, you know, I, I, I'm i glad. It just, it, it was, it was, you know, it's not something I would go back to. No, <laughs> I don't think they would. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> some of the questions. So about um, tarot, some people notice that, um, like I've, had to, if I've had to redo, I did a card reading and I noticed like something wasn't right with one of the cameras, it wasn't showing up. And so I was like, well, if you re shuffle, did you pull the same cards? I mean, how do you, I, I want to explain some things about tarot. First of all, for me as a, a medium, I, and you know, just a psychic and a medium, I use my intuition you have to listen to your intuition and the spirit, you know, it, what they, they're they saying to you and what you're drawn to. It's not, I never memorized all the tarot cards. First of all, I thought, oh, that just seems crazy. Is that a lot of work? You know, 70 something, 77 cards or something. Uh, and I used to have like a photographic memory, but still I would, no, <laughs> no. Now my memory's just shot. Hmm, it's uh, hypothyroidism really messes with you. You have no idea. It messes with your brain, your body, everything. It's, and I do have that. In fact, I was just, yesterday I was supposed to get a root canal. And I brought me in and they were like, oh no, this is going to be um, more work. <laughs> this is really inflamed. We want to sedate you, so come in tomorrow. So I was going to go today, but then that ended up being rescheduled for Monday of next week. But I also had a doctor's appointments, and yeah, I had you know get my blood work done, and I'm trying to stay healthy and make sure my meds are right. It's a lot of work, <laughs> and I, I I know my meds are off because I gained a ton of weight in a like a year, I had like over thirty pounds, and I hadn't. Yeah, that's, that's what happens when something goes wrong with your thyroid. That's just, well, and to try to lose it, you need to get all the stuff back in order, and it's going to take a while. But I've been living with this for quite some time in my life, in my later in life. So anyway, with tarot, like I said, I don't memorize all the cards. Now, some cards do have um, some specific meanings, yes. And a lot of it is the imagery on the cards. So, you know, if, I would suggest if you want to get into tarot, getting the original Rider weight deck and using that to practice to get to know what the imagery is of the cards, you know, and the, you know, you have the wands, which is fire, swords, which is your air element, uh, coins, which is your earth. 
and cups is your water element. And so you have your, your four elements and different, if you know anything about numerology, sometimes that also comes into play with the cards, like what each number can mean. Like when you get a five, there's a lot, that's like, just a lot often means something's like, there's some kind of di uh, discord. There could be uh, fighting, arguing, and depending on the element and each element is tied to like, you have, um, gosh, I wasn't going to go into all this. So I'm just going off the top of my head here, folks, but you have your air and you have fire and you have ground or the earth. So you have with that, you also have, um, you know, dealing with the physical body, your mind, communication, emotions, come with each of the different four elements. And when you got that tied together, all right, and you put in with the numerology, if you know some numerology, like one is usually the beginning of something, the creation of something, something about to start. 10 is the, um, like the completion the, the end of something, what is, what's happened, uh, with the fulfillment of something. Yeah. Right. You, it's the, you kind of get a feel for the numbers, what they are. And you mix that with the cards, which you know about the elements that tie to the symbols, <laughs> the four, you know, cups, uh, wands, swords, and coin or pentacle. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it's not all that hard to figure out, honestly. <laughs> I know people are like, oh, really? This sounds a little bit more complicated. But most importantly, things in your life, you see an image of something and it conjures up a feeling. It conjures up emotion, you know, emotion. You think of, oh, it's this. I think of... You know, I think of, when I think of Raggedy Ann, I think of my little doll, Yang Yang, that I used to call her, and she was my precious little doll. And some people might think Annabelle, you know. It's two different, it's the same image, but two different people are going to see it and differently. So that's when you're looking at the cards and the symbolism. How some of the cards are going to mean are going to be different based on the reader, the person who's reading them. Because how they, how certain things evoke emotion, bring back memories. It means something to them because of something in their life that's happened. That's also real key. And sometimes I've noticed with sub cards, it can mean a little differently when it's in a different deck. And I, that's why I do have a very, I have a big, so I got a lot of decks, okay? And you, ha I haven't even used half of them in these videos. I, I, I don't even have half of them behind me, folks. But, um, you know, it just feels what I feel drawn to at the time I will use. And different decks sometimes kind of just have a different atmosphere, a different feeling about toward about them that I would, you want to, you know, it's like, if I'm doing this kind of reading, I, I want to use this deck, not this one. You know, that also very key in there. Now, another thing when, you know, someone's like, well, if you're doing that rereading, why isn't the cards, you know, why can't, do you get the exact same cards? Not necessarily. No. Has it happened? Yeah, it has. And then I'm like, what? <laughs> other times, what it is, is you can say the same thing and just in a different way, using different cards in and how the cards are ordered and the position, like some people use that traditional Celtic cross. I usually just go a three side to side. Sometimes I'll put like one person on one side, one on the other side and have what's going on together. It just, it really depends. And I usually come up with more of my own layouts. It works better for me because I understand it. It makes sense in my head. And so when I'm reading, and I'm opened up to the spirit, it's, things flow a lot smoother. <laughs> so, that 
is how, because everything has so many different, you know, you can, the cards can mean so many different things. You know, sometimes you'll put a card down and it'll just one little picture in the card, one little thing will stand out and it's because you're supposed to see that, not the rest of the card. It's not the whole card. It's just like, oh, I just saw that symbol. Oh my gosh, that's, and you'll realize that that's what you were supposed to be paying attention to. That's how, yeah, you, you can have the same thing said with different cards popping up. That's how we can have different tarot readers doing the same reading, coming to the same conclusions, and, but having different cards and seeing and coming at it from a different angle because that's, we're all different. So that's that's normal. <laughs> I've been asked if I was a medium. Now I've always like kind of, of I've always avoided labels. I that's what's kind of hard. I'm Gen X here, and you know, labels were not something that I wanted. You know, we were we were in the closet. We were hiding. I yeah. So you know, the younger generations they all want to have a label. They want to have an identity, and it's like, oh, well, I've always avoided that. This is a whole other concept for me. So, yeah, I, you know, I am a psychic medium. Now, not all psychics are mediums, but all mediums are psychic. I'm very empath empathetic, and I prefer to be alone. I am such an introvert. People who will see me outside, or you see me here, you probably think, I'm just like, ah, party girl! Yeah, you know, I want to be out with her, but no. I like to be alone. Some of my favorite parts of the day is I will finish being out, with the family, go upstairs into my bedroom, get up on the bed or they have a recliner in there, get comfortable, sipping some tea, and I'll either be writing or I will be watching something on TV or just have music playing. And I just, uh, you know, relax in there. It's, it's my, and I could be, do that like 24 seven, you know, I, I don't need people. And that's that. The thing is, I love people. And when I do things and I put myself out, people will say, well, you're an out, you know, you're not an introvert. You're just like all out there. It's, it's like, you know, my signs. I am, <laughs> this is how you can see. my rising sign is Aries. And I'm a fire. That's the fire in me. And the, so a lot of this energy that I get, but my sun sign is a Taurus. And that's grounds me in that, you know, I like the comforts of home. And I mean, my home, I love my, I like to make my home cozy and make different rooms. That's why I like, I change different room, the rooms layout of the house in the house, different, just to kind of just, I just, I love being cozy into my house. I love my home. It's a beautiful house. I love where it's located. And I love that it's closer to the schools for my kids. And yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So for me, yeah, that there's, you know, and then my moon sign is a Sagittarius. We got another fire sign. So I got the fire is all around me here, folks. <laughs> So yeah, I could, you know, but then I'm grounded with my Taurus here, you know? So you kind of see more of the fire signs, of the, you know, the Aries of me when I'm out in public, but when I'm just here by myself or I'm just around my family, I am just the quiet, calm Taurus. <laughs> so does that make sense? Okay. But um, yeah, I, let's see here now. Oh, here's one, but I've already answered it. Now, how can cards mean something different in one reading from another? Now, I did discuss this. It's, you know, because reading intuitively, we're looking at the symbols, see what stands out, see what cards are next to it. Now, using the Lenderman deck that I love to use, I really am drawn to that deck. And I have, I can't wait, um, a pre-release, I had pre-ordered a deck another Lenormand deck and it's all steampunk theme and I can't wait just to get it. It's supposed to be here this week. Fingers crossed, you know. <sighs> I can't wait to see it. I really can't. But with that deck, you don't read reversals. Yeah, I do read the reversals. Now some people, you know, 
there was some times when I don't think, no, I shouldn't have to read the reversals because you can get an opposite meaning of something because of a different card being next to it. The reverse is like, oh, like there's the luck card in the Lennerman deck and whatever cards are next to it is going to tell you if this is going to be good luck or it's just it's bad luck. You have no luck at all. So that's how, you know, you have to go by what's around and the context. Just like you're reading and you're studying things, you need to look at the whole context of the situation, get a big picture. So you have to kind of look at the picture for the cards to make sense. So sometimes I'll be seeing something and then I'll be like, oh, wait a minute. I didn't notice because I'm seeing the bigger picture now. More cards are out. And it's like, whoa, that just jumped out. And that's how. Now, hmm. I also have this question recently and I had to address this and um, it was, I had a reading and it resonated in me and now a year or so later I get a reading and it's completely different. How can that be? I'll tell you how that can be. It's free will, honey. Nothing is ever set in stone. And this is why, you know, it's like, you want to tell people, don't rely on a psychic mediums. Don't rely on a religious person or anybody to tell you, you know, hey, this is how it's going to be. This is, you know, it's, things are predestined. Don't rely on just one person and one view because things change. You have a free will. Nothing is, in set, is set in stone. Just because at one moment in time something is true doesn't mean it's, it, it can't change. And it's often, it's because how we grow and, and we turn change and we learn our path can and does change. A psychic can see what path you are on at that moment. Sometimes they can even see that there are other paths. And it's by your actions and decisions that make changes things into different direction so you can get a reading and you'd be like whoa i don't like where that's headed good take that information and make the changes you need to avoid it that's that's something that to keep in mind oh yeah i have been asked this do i believe in god and jesus am i a witch the answers are yes and yes and yes <laughs> You see, I have felt that there is such a strong connection between various religions around the world. Yet, there are differences, and that could be due to our Creator revealing themselves in a way that we can understand, relate to, even accept. And it has a lot to do with the different parts of the world and our culture and who people are, how we're going to see things and accept things. Is one religion right over all the rest? I will say I don't know. But I do will say that humans have shared stories about gods and goddesses. And even in the, the Bible, humans, when you share these things, they have, we have a bias in the retelling. And much like in that game Telephone, what was actually said or done is not what is heard or passed on when you get to the end. It gets lost in the translation. Humans are infallible. Dogma is not healthy. I believe the spirit world is real. I have seen angels, demons, and even a vision of Jesus. I know we're not alone in this world. I believe that there is a great spirit and there are gods and goddesses. Some go by different names depending where in the world you are. Like each of us, Jesus is a son of God. We are children of God. We are children of the spirit of this creation. Yes, Jesus existed. Yes, he was a prophet. Yes, he performed those miracles. Do I think he's the only way to heaven? No. Or, or I, I, it's, would I say there's heaven there? You know, I think sometimes we also come back to redo stuff in our lives, to learn more lessons, so we become elevated. There, it, there's so many possibilities. And I can't just say it's one way or another. And I'm not going to. I just, I'm open to learning more. I love studying the religions of the world. I really love, if you don't know, you see, you know that Sparta, that name? It came from 
a nickname my wife gave me, Princess Sparta, because Sparta, because we both have a lot of love and passion for ancient Greece, ancient Rome, even ancient Egypt, you know? That whole time, it, it, we, I, I mean, I love mythology, studied that since I was a child. I just, all the stories and the lessons you learn from the stories, much like the lessons you learned in a Bible, it's, I've always enjoyed all that. So that's where uh, Sparta comes from because of my love of ancient history. And the Spartans were total badass. <laughs> and I love how they treated women for that time. Women had power. Women were the equal. And that, and that that's, that, you know, <laughs> meant a lot to me. Um, let's see here. Oh, boy. I think that's just, you know, just a few little questions I've answered. Like I said, this is just a short, cute, sweet little video. Just me sitting here, chilling, drinking coffee, and chit-chatting. I'd love for you to share your thoughts down below. Um, if you have questions that you would like answered, just let me know ask away and I will, I might do something like a quick Instagram thing or a YouTube short. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. You know, I love you guys. Remember, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. See you next time.